Hey, what's going on guys? So I wanna talk about Thorchain, why its price is pumping, and then I also wanna share with you some projects to watch in the Thorchain ecosystem as well. So that's what we're gonna be covering in this video. Thorchain, just a week ago on the 6th of March, today is the 12th, so less than a week ago, it was around $5, and now it just touched $10.41, so it's done about a 2X in just one week. And this is because they just introduced their lending feature. So if you zoom out on the price here, this whole run up that we had was from streaming swaps, which made swapping on Thorchain much, much, much cheaper. And you can compete now with centralized exchanges. This last run up though, this is from the mechanics of lending. Lena, who is one of the core devs of Thorchain, had this to say on February 25th. So this is before, right? This was like, two weeks, about a week and a half, two weeks before we saw this lending run up of what exactly was gonna happen and it has actually happened. So now I know that she doesn't care that I'm sharing this for sure. So 60 million rune was burnt. This is, this is how this works, which caused lending caps to go up by 20 million rune. So $100 million in collateral can come into the system for you to borrow against which is $50 million in buy burn pressure on Rune because half of that collateral is gonna be Rune in the pools. This is gonna increase the price of Rune, which means the lending caps can raise because more Rune is gonna get burned when there's lending, which means more collateral can be put in the system and it's like this flywheel effect for lending. And I think that's exactly what we're seeing. There's a lot of big loans, like there's some million dollar loans I think I saw over on Twitter and this flywheel just seems to be happening. There's probably a bit of speculation too in there as well. If you go take a look at the dashboard, it looks though, this is the lending health dashboard. There's, it's only 35% filled. So really I'm sharing this video with you. I'll, I'll share sort of how you might be able to use this because these loans are no expiration, no interest and no fear of liquidation. So if you want to loop or potentially do some leverage, and I'm just going to kind of explain how you could do that, considering there is still some room left in here to, to do that. Something to watch for and why there might be a lot of demand for this lending product is this, which is happening over on MakerDAO. They have raised their borrowing rate to 17.25% as of 12 hours ago, and this tweet was just yesterday. So they have raised their interest rates. There's no interest rates on Thorchain. So this guy just goes over an example and he's saying that if he was to switch over to Thorchain for this same loan, he would be saving $60,000 a year, which is basically a no brainer, which sounds like it's exactly what he plans to do. And Smith, also a great follow over on Twitter. If you're not following Smith, go follow. Uh, it's Curve, Frax, Ave. All of the other platforms look like they are increasing their interest rates in order to borrow, if I'm reading this right. So, and it, it looks like there's a reason. Just two weeks into the Athena launch, and I'm not sure what that has to do with anything. I don't really follow the Ethereum ecosystem all that closely, but that might be why they're raising their rates, which is perfect for Thorchain. It's just gonna push people right on into the lending pl uh, platform and keep this flywheel going for who knows how long. So if you wanna do lending on Thorchain, what you could do, let's say that you have one Bitcoin right now and it's worth $70,000. You can borrow 50% against that. So you put in your Bitcoin, you're probably gonna pay a small fee to get it in there and the, they do have a 30 day minimum. So you can't, it's not very short term, but you get that, you can withdraw in USDC or USDT if you want to, or even Ethereum, I believe. And you can only do this lending with Bitcoin and Ethereum also, by the way. But then what you can do is you take that $35,000 and you could go buy more Bitcoin with it or more Ethereum or Rune or whatever else you wanted to. So in this way, that's kind of using leverage. You're using your collateral, taking a loan against it that doesn't have interest, doesn't expire. There's no timeline on it. And then you're going and buying more crypto. And if we're in the bull market, you'd expect all that to go up you could sell it later. So let's say you take that $35,000 in USDT and you go buy, I don't know, let's just say Ethereum. And then Ethereum does a 2X. You sell your Ethereum, you go pay back your loan, which is only half of that, pocket the extra, and then pay off your loan and get the collateral back. And if you put in Bitcoin, 
and Bitcoin's price has gone up, you get to get your collateral too, which has also just gone up in price. But let's see if by the end of recording this, if it gets up past $10 again. So ThorChain is a layer one blockchain. It is not a dApp, it is infrastructure. It's in Trust Wallet, a bunch of different wallets. Let's see if they have wallets over here. Yeah, Trust Wallet, Edge, Shapeshift Wallet, Furs Wallet. It's also in the XDeFi wallet as well, which I'm not seeing here. Oh, that's because it's not a mobile. These are just mobile. Then you've got XDeFi, MetaMask, Leap. And by the way, my favorite wallet is the XDeFi wallet for browser extensions. I'll put a link to a setup video uh, down below if you wanna check that out. The first ecosystem project I wanna share with you is ThorSwap, which is probably the biggest DEX that volume for ThorChain passes through. And speaking of, let's see. Just refreshing the page really quick. ThorChain, this isn't just for ThorShop, a Thor, Thor swap. This is ThorChain stats. It looks like 529 million. All we need is 2 million more, less than $2 million more in swaps. And there's still a couple hours to do it before ThorChain breaks its all time high in a day, which it just did just a few days ago. So volume is trending up for ThorChain. But ThorSwap, it's one of the leading DEXs. It collects a lot of affiliate fees. And if you wanted to buy their Thor token, which is an ERC20 token, it looks like it is also going up as well. I think I have that over here. So yeah, the Thor token itself, I drew some, I'm not a TA expert, I just drew some levels on it uh, previously. It looks like at this 40, this 40 cents is where it kind of sticks. It's made it up as high as like a dollar and 50 cents or so. So it could potentially have a 3X. So yeah, you could see here, right? This 40 cents area. Looks like something, but if it breaks out above that, who knows where it might might necessarily go. Not financial advice. I don't know what's gonna happen with this stuff, but if you buy their token, you can actually stake it. So if we go to the staking tab, shows here that it is earning 20% and this is real yield. I believe 75% of the fees go to the token holders and 25% goes to the operations. And ThorSwap is burning down some of their supply. One of the complaints that people had in the past, the total supply used to be 500 million like ThorChain, but they implemented this burn mechanism. So every month, depending on the volume, they are burning some of their tokens. This will probably eventually sit around 300 million tokens or so, if I remember right. And it's at 171 million now, but it looks like they have removed the caps. So this month, if there is major volume, which we're already seeing, then they're gonna do a pretty big burn of their supply. So just something bullish to look out for. Maybe that has an impact on the token price, I don't know. Then we've got a friendly fork of ThorChain as well, Maya Protocol. They are essentially ThorChain, except they've got a little bit different of a security model, but they're gonna have streaming swaps here very soon. And if you remember, when I shared this chart with you over on Rune, Rune went from about $1.50 to $5 when they introduced streaming swaps. Is that gonna happen for Cacao necessarily? You know, I'm not sure, but that is coming up around the corner. They're also adding chain integrations. You got Arbitrum, Cardano, and I believe they're working on Caspa too, but there needs to be a little bit of a change to the tech either on Caspa side or on my protocol side. So I'm not really sure where that sits right now but all the tokens are in circulation. There's only hundred million of them and the price right now is a hundred or is a $1.19. So the fully diluted is 119 million. And if you compare that to ThorChain, ThorChain is, ThorChain is at about 3 billion right now. So if Maya protocol was to reach what ThorChain is right now at the top of the bull run, then that is potentially like what is that, like a 25X maybe or so? Again, not financial advice. I don't know what these are actually gonna do. And then there's also Cacao Swap, and this just launched. They are doing a, they're incentivizing volume right now. They have a Yum token. So if you wanted to use this over here, you can swap for the different assets on Maya Protocol. And they even have a meme version, which looks pretty pretty interesting. I think, yeah, they got Sandbake for free ride. If you wanna do swaps this way, you got this different look. You got the basic we just looked at, and then you've also got Pro. So you can either trade on here in volume to earn this Yum token, or I do also believe it is going to Kujira stakers. And Maya Protocol does have a Kujira pool. So they have integrated Kujira, Kujira, so that could be something interesting as well. Eldorado Market is another decentralized exchange right now. 
it is integrated with Maya Protocol and Chainflip. Chainflip being another one, I just did a review on this one. So if you wanna check that out, uh, you, can, you can watch that video. Maybe I'll link that one down in the description. But it is integrated with Maya Protocol and Chainflip soon to integrate ThorChain as well through Eldorado Market. And they are gonna be releasing a token of their own as well uh, for contributing to the project if you wanna do that or volume, I believe as well, swapped through here. And then the last one I wanna mention is CoinBot. This one was created when, right around the time Unibot was created, it was you know with the Telegram bot craze. I don't know if that is still a hot narrative or not, but the CoinBot guys, the developers decided to pivot away from the Telegram bots because I guess that wasn't getting as much traction. It wasn't really sticking. It was more like a meme, I guess. So they've pivoted away and from their Telegram, it looks like they're creating this called Forge, which is gonna be a Thor, uh, a Thor chain naming service, similar to like you've seen with Ethereum's naming, naming service. And then they've also teased in their Telegram that they might have other projects or at least another project that they might be working on as well. I'm not sure if they're gonna rebrand it or not, but the price has been doing well lately. This is another one. It's only got 1 million total supply and that is a max supply as well. And all the coins are circulating. Just recently, it was uh, made it all the way down to 66, 67 cents. I think at one point it might've made it down even less than that, but this was February 21st. It was 66 cents and now it is March 12th. So this is like three weeks ago. So, and, and it's done a 3X. So do people possibly know something more about it? I'm not sure. Just speculating, just speculating. So checking on Rune, finished recording. It is at $9.96. We'll have to see if it sticks above $10 and if lending will just keep on pushing it. What do you guys think of the ThorChain ecosystem? If you wanna track my portfolio, I've got a link to that down below. If you're still here, hit the like button and subscribe and I'll see you on the next video.